Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Wendy Buck, Marketing Manager at Wealth Engine, and I'd like to welcome you to our webinar titled, Introducing We Analyze Predictive Lead Scoring in Analytics. Before we get started, I'd like to remind everyone that we are recording this session. A link to the recording, as well as the slides, will be available approximately 24 hours after the webinar. Throughout the presentation, you are welcome to address your questions via the question and answer box, and our staff will try to answer them as we go. We will also address as many questions as we can during the Q&A portion of this webinar. At this time, I am pleased to introduce today's presenters, Mark Logan, President and CEO of Wealth Engine, and John Sponge, Senior Vice President of Product Management. Thank you for joining us today. Now I will turn it over to you, Mark. Great. Thank you very much, Wendy. As Wendy indicated, this is Mark Logan. I'm the President and CEO of Wealth Engine. I'm going to go through a brief overview of the company some of our solutions, and I'll tee up the topics for discussion and demonstration today. Then it'll be my great pleasure to turn it over to our SVP of Product Management, John Funch, as we get into the presentation. And you're going to find uh, some very, very interesting uh, uh, discussion points and, uh, and some uh, demonstration points. We're going to leave a little time open at the end for, for questions and answers. So just about the, the agenda. We have over 500 registered attendees uh, for, this, uh, for this call. Most of you are, are new to Wealth Engine, there are prospects. We ha also have a large uh, group of customers. So let me start by thanking our customers for your loyalty over the years. And let me thank all of the attendees for your time today. We're going to start off by uh, going through a little bit about the company, about Wealth Engine. I'll turn it over to John Fund when we get into the analyzing of uh, the audience today. I think you'll learn a lot of interesting statistics about this, uh, this group. And we're going to go through a, a live presentation of We Analyze, our exciting new product. And as I say, we'll leave some time open for online questions and answers. So I would encourage you, as we go through the discussion today, to jot down questions you may have and submit them. And Wendy will, uh, will read them off at the end of the discussion. Okay, a little bit about Wealth Engine because many of you are new to the company or don't know a lot about us. We've been in business for quite some time, over 10 years in business, and we're very proud of the fact that we have over 3,000 customers, a very loyal customer base. We serve a number of very diverse markets, both on the commercial side and in the nonprofit uh, side. Those markets include luxury goods, real estate, home sales, consumer goods. We have a big market share in banking and insurance. But our reach in the nonprofit business is also very, very well known, and some might say the bedrock and cornerstone of our business. So we serve the needs of advocacy groups, faith-based groups, environmental groups, uh, health-based uh, uh, missions, animal rights. In the higher ed market, we feature over 800 different colleges and universities that use our solutions. We also have a, a tremendous uh, and growing market in healthcare and hospitals. We are really the, the industry's leading profiler of affluent and high net worth individuals. And we've got a series of data and analytics and marketing solutions that we deliver to these uh, markets. It will be complemented by what we introduced today. As the Gartner Group stated earlier this year, nobody other than Wealth Engine has delivered business to consumer consumer data and analytics at the scale and the reach that we provide. So a little bit about that scale and reach. In our solution, we have over 240 million profiles, which covers 89% of the U.S. adult population across 125 million homes. We ingest, on an ongoing basis, over 65 data sources. So we know that you know who your customers are and who your donors are, but we know far more about their net worth, their lifestyle attributes, and a whole host of other characteristics about them. And today, we'll show you ways to harness them to deliver high value to you. A little bit about what drives us and how we do it. We have a great suite of products. We've created solutions leveraging data science that engage in predictive analytics. So we've created solutions like our, our fairly uh, famous and infamous P to G scores, that's propensity to give scores. 
we've created whole industries uh, known as grateful patient programs for hospitals fundraising. Every day we evaluate new data sources. So we mentioned we've got 65 data sources today. We're always looking for the finest data to help our customers do a better job of targeting, marketing, and engaging with donors and customers. Now, how do we deliver this tremendous amount of data across these 240 million uh, individuals? We've got a, a whole host of SaaS tools. We have the leading search tool in the industry. We call it uh, Find Wealth 8 or FW8. It's our SaaS tool. We are integrated, our data is integrated with dozens of donor management and CRM solutions. So we embed our, our data and our results into these uh, providers. And they include companies like Salesforce, Illusion, and many, many others. Last year, we introduced and delivered the industry's leading wealth API to tremendous success. So our API solution is another way to integrate our data into various either homegrown or other uh, solutions. And then, without going through the whole line card, I'll highlight today we're going to be talking about We Analyze. So why is it exciting? We take a lot of the guesswork out of prospecting. What if we could double your prospect to customer conversion rates? What if we could find hundreds or thousands of ideal prospects to serve the needs of your mission or your products and your services? So we asked our customers recently, what are, the, what are the key drivers? What are your key challenges? Many of them told us they're asked to be they're 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 being asked to do more with less. We analyze takes data science and modeling tasks that previously took four to six weeks to deliver and completes them in five to ten minutes. And John's going to show you just how we do it. You know, I thought I would share for everybody on this uh, audience a uh, a great case study and anecdote that I heard last week from one of our uh, very, very large nonprofit clients. They're an early adopter of We Analyze, and they shared a great fundraising story with me. They ran a black tie event with 400 donors last week, and they used We Analyze to better understand the entire base of registered attendees, and they found dozens of specifics about them, but one that was very meaningful. They found there was a preponderance of a certain make of luxury car within the group of very high net worth individuals that were attending the event. They took that information prior to holding the event and went to other luxury car manufacturers and offered them sponsorship opportunities using the data that they gleaned out of We Analyze. And they were successful in securing one of the competitor car manufacturers. So, so as every day passes, we hear more and more use cases for the We Analyze tool and for the results that we drive. So, allow me to ask the following question. What if we could enable you to find new prospects that look exactly like your best customers and discover new opportunities among the people that you already know? Wouldn't that allow you to do better target marketing? Wouldn't that allow you to be more efficient in your pipeline conversion rates? We believe it would. We're starting to see the benefits. Our customers are starting to see the benefits. And today is the first public announcement of this new solution we analyze. So it gives me great pleasure to turn the mic over to our SVP of product, John Funge, really one of the uh, the, the leading authorities in, in uh, minds behind this new solution set. So John, take it away. All right. Mark, thank you very much. <clears throat> um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, it's, great to, it's great to be with you. Um, so we thought it would be fun. Uh, we have this uh, this platform that's very powerful and uh, designed to analyze and see inside of different groups. So we thought it would be fun to actually take a look at uh, at you guys, the folks that have uh, registered to attend this webinar. And uh, so um, it, we figured it's a great way to illustrate the types of insights that you can get out of uh, out of this new product. And then uh, what we'll do is we'll go through a little bit of that, and then I will actually take you on a a quick tour. Of uh, we analyze itself, and then we'll open it up for uh, for some questions. So, as this slide shows you right here, um, this is the geographic breakdown of the attendees of uh, or the registrants rather of this 
uh, of this webinar. Um, so how about some basic demographics about you guys? Uh, well, um, it, it, this is a, a breakdown of the gender uh, and marriage and, uh, and age of the folks that uh, signed up to attend, uh, attend this, uh, this webinar. Um, do most of the attendees have kids? Well, looks like you do. Uh, so there's a, a, a pretty significant uh, percentage of folks that have that have children. In fact, uh, if you compare it to the nation, uh, and so the, the the population that we're analyzing, that is you guys, uh, compared to the national average. So that the, the, the population we're analyzing is in blue, the national average is in gray. Um, you guys over-index in terms of having having children. Um, are attendees more city folks or into sort of the outer suburbs? Well, we have, a, we have an attribute in our, our platform called urbanicity, and according to our urbanicity attribute, you guys are uh, over-indexing in terms of a suburban and town uh, locations, uh, a little bit under-indexing in terms of uh, urban and, and downtown. Um, are attendees more Democrat or Republican? So uh, appropriate question this uh, election season, maybe. Um, turns out that uh, there's a, a higher proportion of you are, in fact, uh, Democrats. Uh, at least uh, according to our data. Um, how about in terms of language preference, after English, uh, what, what's the second language of, uh, of choice? Uh, well, as you might guess, it, it is Spanish. That's, that's somewhat intuitive. But one thing to look at on this chart, which is interesting, is that uh, this particular group uh, is relatively under-indexing in terms of uh, Spanish speaking relative to the country. And so, uh, a little bit more of an English-speaking uh, group than uh, than if you scooped out an average population uh, in the U.S. Um, so, which of these charitable interests are you most interested in as a group? Well, turns out it's political, and so uh, political causes are are where we uh, we have the, the most interest uh, in this uh, in this particular population. Um, now we get into the good stuff. Um, so, how about uh, how about the wealth profile of the group of people here that are uh, signed up for this uh, this webinar, uh, and, and so you can see with this histogram that there's a relatively broad distribution of uh, of total assets among the folks that are uh, part of this uh, part of this webinar. Um, so, are you guys more into reading or into technology? Um, well, turns out you're into both. Um, so if you uh, if you look at um, if you look at the interests and so the We Analyze platform has uh, hundreds of interest attributes and it will uh, reveal for a population you're analyzing the top interests and so you can see here right at the top of the list are interests in technology and PC ownership as well as um, as, as well as reading. Um, so let me put another one to you here. <clears throat> are attendees more into furnishing and decorating or women's apparel? Well. Turns out uh, it's both as well, um, and so uh, in this particular case, um, one thing to note here uh, is that these are both two very high-ranking attributes, uh, but there's a slight difference in the amount of over-indexing. So actually, even though interest in home and gardening and furnishing and decorating is, is higher on an absolute basis relative to the country, this particular group of folks has a more uh, intense uh, and kind of over-indexing. Um, than uh, than the uh, with regard to women's apparel. So, how about more SUVs or cars? Turns out, uh, premium mid-sized cars are the top-ranking uh, type of vehicle, uh, followed by compact SUVs. And lastly, uh, how about the actual car model, not just car type? What is the the top car model? Uh, Amongst your uh, amongst your uh, uh, you guys, well, it turns out the Honda CRV is the top car model that uh, that this group of folks uh, seems to uh, seems to prefer the most. Um, so now we've just spent maybe three or five minutes going over a few statistics about you, about you all, and I think everybody on on the, the phone right now probably has uh, a better understanding of. Of this group, we have a, a, a sort of a portrait that we're developing of this group, um, which is just incredibly powerful. Um, and and uh, and what we're going to do right now is we're going to show you just exactly how we we were able to pull that portrait together. So, um, what we analyze is is, is 
predictive lead scoring and analytics. Uh, and what we do is, you know, in a lot of ways, it, it's a, a, a value proposition that Wealth Engine has been providing for our clients for a while. Uh, but what we're doing with, with our platform here is we're making it much, much, much easier and faster, um, you know, almost comparing a, uh, an old-fashioned dial telephone with a, you know, one of those, those kind of uh, rotary dial phones to uh, maybe uh, Skype. Uh, that's kind of the, maybe the comparison. So, um, you know, for what, you know, doing a, a data screening and then having your analytics team analyze the data and so on, we're, we're really taking that process, which as Mark had mentioned, can take, you know, four to eight weeks, and, and we're compressing it down to seconds, um, really uh, uh, taking a lot of friction out of that process. And in doing so, um, we're, we're really uh, thinking that it, it will enable you to avail yourself of sophisticated data science and analytics techniques in situations that otherwise in the past would have been uh, kind of impossible. And so it, in some ways, think of it kind of like a, a casual application of, of this very sophisticated data and, and analytic techniques because it's so quick and easy to do. Um, the data platform that we're working with is um, is really is one of the largest consumer data sets uh, that is is around, and uh, this platform really does give you the power to to um, to harness that so that you can understand and really see into your customers, but also to find new prospects uh, that that look just like your your best ones. So here's how uh, we analyze works. You provide. Uh, the system an audience to analyze. And so what is that? It's basically just a list. So it could be a list of names and addresses, or it could be a list of email addresses, recognizing that you may have different data that you that you collect and, and have. Um, and that that list is sort of a sample. That, that, that's what the system kind of analyzes as the, as the sample uh, that you're looking for. So it, perhaps that audience that you want to analyze might be your best customers. Another could be, perhaps it could be um, people that converted on a particular campaign, you want to understand why did those people convert, or maybe why did the people that not convert, who were, you know, you could analyze them. So really, it's just any list that you want to analyze. So what we do at that point is that the, the data gets uploaded into our platform, and we attach our wealth engine data to each of the people in that list, and uh, and that data is considerable. We have. Uh, as we've mentioned before, over 1,500 attributes get attached to every one of those names. And so if you imagine it like a spreadsheet, it's kind of like you go down the list and it's names and addresses, and then you have columns, 1,500 columns of data. So you can imagine a spreadsheet like that, that's a lot of data. It's, it's, uh, it would be very hard to uh, kind of make sense of all that, a lot of work. And so what we do is we use the system and computers to do what they do best. They they take that giant grid of data and they make sense of it for you. So what we do is we compile and crunch that data to create a dashboard. And that dashboard, so in the in the um, information that we just went through about you guys, about the, the participants in this webinar, we were showing you some of the dashboard charts that are produced uh, by the by the tool. And this happens very quickly. It happens really in a matter of seconds, and I'll show you this in just uh, in just a moment. Now, the other thing you can do is um, you can actually create a, a look-alike model. So the, the dashboard provides you really good descriptive insight into your, uh, into your segment or the audience that you're analyzing. What the look-alike model does is it takes it a step further, and the look-alike model further analyzes all of uh, the members of your group that you're, an that you're analyzing to really understand what are the attributes that are most distinguishing, that the really unique attributes. And in some ways, we, we sometimes use um, uh, the sort of the, the nickname, the, the, the kind of the data fingerprint or data DNA of your group. Um, and, and we figure out what those top attributes that really make that particular population unique and special relative to the national average. And then that model, we use those top attributes in uh, our, our lookalike processing for scoring other data. And so the other data that you can score, there's, there's two types. You can score data that you already have. So if you have other lists, um, and uh, in the example that, that, uh, that Mark uh, had mentioned, the other list uh, was uh, the attendees to this black tie gala. So you may have a large database of, of, um, of prospects already. You may buy prospect lists. You may have um, a customer list. 
you, you know, there's tons and tons and tons of data. We're swimming in data. The thing that, well, that, that we analyze really uh, helps you do is it helps you to harness that data and bring it down and really prioritize all those different prospects so that you can understand who to invest your sales and marketing uh, and, you know, sort of energy and focus on. And so that's scoring. So you can take other lists and essentially run them against the lookalike model to score them. Now, the way the scoring in We Analyze works is it works on a scale from 1 to 100. So if a, if a, uh, a prospect is scored at 100, it, it's very similar to the people that are in your sample list. So if you created a model based on your, your best customers and somebody that you scored against that model had a, you know, a 98, that would mean that they possess the same data attributes to make them very, very similar to the people that were in that best customer list. Um, if, they're, if they score a one at the other end, that means they're very, very different. And so you, as you can imagine, that number allows you to prioritize and rank your prospects very, very effectively, very, very quickly. The other thing that we have is this seamless integration between We Analyze and our, our prospecting tool, We Prospect. So We Prospect is our platform for enabling you to create prospect lists very, very quickly, very, very easily. And, uh, and so we'll show you this in a second. What you do is simply uh, select different attributes you're interested in, and then you can, you can pull the list. What, what we analyze integration with We Prospect lets you do is it actually lets you use the, the model that you create as a, as a kind of filter criteria when you're pulling lists, uh, prospect lists. So, for example, if you were creating a list and you said, I want everybody within uh, within five miles of this uh, Pittsburgh area zip code that has a net worth greater than ten million dollars, that would be a very good list. But you could even make it a better list by saying, "I want everybody within five miles of that Pittsburgh zip code that have, uh, you know, a, a ten million net worth or higher that also have a lookalike score based on we analyze process, um, we analyze processing uh, compared to my best customer model of above a certain threshold." maybe 70. And then you're not only you're not only getting those those you know wealthy folks in the right area, but you're also getting wealthy folks in the right area that from a data perspective look very similar to your best prospects. That's that's the, the way it works. So once you get these very, very focused and targeted lists, of course you can run your campaigns and uh, and they will perform. But the thing that's really great about this is that because it's so fast and it's so easy to use we analyze and to, uh, and to do this, uh, this analysis, you can actually take the results so you can see who converts, and you can feed it right back in. So you create another audience. You say, okay, well, that, I ran that campaign. Let me see who converted, and let me analyze that group, and let me continue to refine and continue to refine. And you create this really powerful feedback loop that enables you to continue to improve your efficiency, improve your list. Um, so this is how we analyze works. Let me jump over and actually show you. So this is our final state platform, and inside here you can see we've got these different tabs. The different tabs are for uh, the different uh, the different uh, products and capabilities that we provide by the platform. Um, and so I'm going to start right here actually with our our, our we prospect tool. So analyze is the, is the main thing we're going to get into, but I actually want to start here with with our prospect tool. And so. Our prospect tool, as I had mentioned before, enables you to, uh, to, to identify lists of people uh, to find prospects. And so this is drawing now from our national database of over 240 million profiles. And I will run through a couple of very, very quick examples to give you, uh, to give you the idea how it works. And you'll catch on very, very quickly. So you say, if I was interested in people that had, uh, say, a 10 million net worth or higher, there's, we have 312,000. Uh, out of 240 million in the country. And then you say, well, maybe I'm interested in people that are within uh, 10 miles of uh, Arlington, Virginia. I can add that, uh, that element in there. And then maybe I'm interested in folks that um, uh, I only want one per household uh, so that I don't, uh, you know, if I'm, if I'm sending a, a, a mailer to the home, I don't send two. And perhaps I want, um, I want people where I, I can reach them on the business phone. And so, you can see that just by clicking on these different, uh, these different um, uh, things on the screen, you can very, very quickly uh, narrow down this list. Now, 
Down here, we also have a really rich array of other interest and lifestyle attributes that allows you to really slice and dice this, uh, this, this data set of 240 million profiles. And so, uh, for example, if you said, well, well, perhaps I really want to target business owners, you can add a business owner element onto there. Um, and you say, well, perhaps I, I really, uh, I'm, I'm, in, you know, I'm, I'm hosting an event that um, has to do, it's, at my, it's a golf event, uh, and so I want people that are interested in golf. So you can see we have um, a, a significant number of these different interest elements, and you can say, well, okay, let me, let me find folks that are interested in golf, and I'll add that on to, uh, I'll add that on. And so you can see just, just in about 30 seconds, uh, with a few clicks, we found about 400 people that are laser focused and a perfect, uh, perfect target. This is our, our prospect uh, product. Um, and I show it to you because we're going to come back here in about 15 minutes. Um, uh, but I wanted, to, uh, I wanted to make sure that you, you have the, the sort of context of, uh, of, what this, uh, of what this tool does. Now, if I was interested in getting this list, I could, I could simply preview the results. And uh, I will get some counts. Uh, that will, will tell me uh, the composition in more detail. It will also give me a price for the list, and then I can simply get the list if I want it. That's, the, that's our WeProspect tool. So now, let me jump over to WeAnalyze. Uh, that is the, the main, uh, the, the main uh, star of the day. And so um, what I want to do with WeAnalyze now is I'm going to actually just step you guys through uh, the process that we went through in preparing for this to create those, uh, that analysis of uh, the participants in this webinar. And so uh, we have lists and models, and lists are really the thing that enable you to create the, uh, the dashboard. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to simply uh, create a new one, and that's just, uh, you can just click on this new list button. And what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to add a list that's on my computer. So I, uh, I've got some lists here, and uh, I'm going to simply take this list uh, from my computer. Now this list is uh, my, the webinar attendees. Uh, and it's, um, it's comma delimited, so we, we accept a, a variety of different formats. And so this is simply a comma delimited file that's on my computer. And so what's happening now is we're going to map, uh, we're going to map these fields. And, uh, and so I simply tell the system what, uh, what field is which so that the system has uh, an understanding of, of which data elements to use as it buzzes through our database of, uh, of profiles to identify everybody. And, uh, and so on hitting next, what happens now is that CSV file is being uploaded from my computer into the Wealth Engine platform. Every member in that list has 1,500 uh, attributes attached to them, and then the system is taking all of that data and crunching it and doing analytic processing to create this incredibly powerful dashboard that gives you this really amazing insight. Now, the thing to remember, I'm about to hit um, uh, the next button to show you the dashboard. But as you look at the dashboard, the thing to remember as you're looking at it is we started with just names and addresses. And it's possible to also just start with email addresses. There's no more additional information that we started with. So if you have just names and addresses or email addresses, you can do this. So um, the dashboard looks like this. And so you can see that uh, these charts, they look familiar because they were the things that were in our presentation that we just stepped through. And so what I did was I just took a CSV file uh, of just names and addresses that were on uh, my computer, and I now have this uh, really incredible uh, statistical breakdown that gives me really, really detailed insights into the demographic wealth and interests uh, of this particular population um, and all of it is compare, gives you a reference set so that you can understand not just your population, but also your population relative to the national average, which is incredibly insightful. And so the types of statistics that you saw before, you can see here in terms of home ownership and gender, net worth, and, and our propensity to give score. So propensity to give is, is a wealth engine uh, proprietary score uh, that uh, evaluates the overall charitable quality of, of uh, different prospects. Um, we have gift capacity, total income, and real estate value, uh, just an incredible array of information. Now, the thing is, this particular dashboard you're looking at, I'll, I'll, I'll draw your attention here, that's really just our summary tab. If you look across the top here, we have a, a whole tab dedicated to wealth, giving, real estate information, demographic information, interests, professional information, vehicles, buying, and then models. And, uh, 
so models is if you are actually uh, if you're actually scoring your list using uh, using uh, our modeling, you can see the charts of the of the, the histogram breakdowns of those um, of those model scores. Let me jump into a couple of these other dashboards just to give you a flavor of what's in here. So if you go into the demographics again, you really start to get a portrait. And, and keep in mind, this could be um, this could be any list. It doesn't matter. So in this particular case, you really start to get a portrait that the attendees uh, of this of this particular webinar um, have. You know, they're they're more married. There's an average age of 47, uh, slightly more uh, female. Um, we have uh, a, a pretty significant over-indexing of households with 14-year-olds. Um, we have um, uh, folks in terms of uh, in terms of uh, education levels, we have some pretty significant over-indexing in terms of having attended graduate school. Um, as far as things like uh, race and religion and ethnicity, uh, it's interesting. We have a, a little over-indexing in terms of Protestant, a little under with regard to Catholic, a little over with regard to Jewish. We've got, um, we've got a real interesting uh, look in terms of um, uh, kind of ethnic backgrounds and and uh, language preference, as we had mentioned before in the uh, in the presentation. So you really start to get this very very rich portrait of um, of the group. Uh, if you look at the interests, this is another area that that is very interesting. So imagine you know if you're uploading uh, your your major donors. Imagine you're you're uploading your best customers. Imagine you're uploading people that converted on a campaign. Um, you know any kind of segment or audience that you want to get some uh, really rich insight into. I mean, you could, if you're running um, a campaign online and you're collecting up um, a lot of email addresses, perhaps people are signing up for a paper or people are signing up for to be part of an advocacy campaign. You can you can uh, really immediately take those populations of people and you can uh, evaluate them to really understand what's what's motivating and what's driving them. Um, you can see here a political party. Um, we've got uh, we've got a really long list of interests, and I can even you know sort of uh, show more here. Uh, and so you can really start to see the different uh, the different top interests here. And one thing to note here is we we actually do uh, allow you to um, look at these lists in different ways. You can look at them sorted by the difference, which shows you uh, the list sorted by the the amount of over and under indexing, or you could look at the absolute value. Um, so you could sort it and say, okay, well actually I want to see uh, the list by the absolute interest, um, or I can actually sort it by the national value. So there's a few ways you can really drill into this list and really get some robust understanding. Uh, again, all of these things um, across all of these different all these different attributes that we have. Um, the last thing I want to show you in this dashboard is uh, well, of course we've got our. I don't want to I don't want um, uh, to uh, uh, gloss over too quickly over over the wealth score. So we have our. Uh, wealth engine wealth scores, uh, and so you you know of course you can get a really really unique insight into uh, into the the uh, wealth characteristics of um, of a of a population, um, and uh, and then you know even even the understanding that the types of cars because cars are really interesting uh, in some ways in terms of a data point because uh, there's a lot of um, there's a lot of data that's kind of uh, uh, collected in the, the selection of a car. I mean, it's a very, uh, it's kind of a, a, a real revealing sort of data point when you're looking at different populations. But you can see here are the different cars, and here's that Honda CRV that we we identified in, in terms of this particular population. Seems like the folks that are on this uh, particular webinar are not particularly big fans of, of Chevrolet. Um, so way under indexing, very much over indexing in terms of Subaru. Um, so just again, we're, we're you know we're, we're getting this real interesting portrait of uh, of the folks that um, are participating in this in this webinar. So what I've done just to review up to this point is that I've taken a list of people that's sim just simply a, a CSV file from my computer that just names and addresses, and then I uploaded it into the platform, and the platform then attached 1,500 attributes onto each one of those members of that list. And then we, uh, and then I, I took, uh, I took that, and um, the, the system crunched it to create this really, really rich dashboard that you can uh, that you can navigate. All of that took uh, really about 30 seconds, and I did it with with everybody here on the phone. Now you can imagine the alternative to that. You'd say, well, if I wanted to try and get this kind of insight some other way, I'm not quite sure how you'd even go about it. I mean, you'd have to do so many data appends, uh, and then you'd have to uh, do a lot of uh, data wrangling, and then you'd have to use some kind of visualization tools. 
and uh, it really gets it, it's quite a it's quite a uh, a lot of effort. Um, and so it's a very very kind of uh, powerful way of getting some really really rich insights very quickly. I'm going to jump over now and show you the second part. So that was the dashboard. I want to show you the modeling next. And so let me um, let me quickly show uh, uh, jump over here to the modeling. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a model. And so you think, oh man, creating a model that that sounds kind of scary. Like it sounds you know calling the analysts and data scientists and stuff. And we have uh, we have um, uh, the, well I guess the good thing is we we have a, a good number of data scientists on our team. And what we did is we, we, we worked very, very closely with our data scientists to try and take their, uh, their insights and their wisdom and to try and bottle it into a, a package here that makes it uh, something that, that uh, most, anybody, uh, most anybody can do. And so what you would do to create um, a, a, a model here is you simply just start and go through a step-by-step -step process, really easy, you name your model. And then the next thing you do is you uh, select the sample list. And so if you remember, the models are created based on uh, a sample list. And so what we're going to use for this particular model is the list uh, of webinar participants. And those are the ones that I just uploaded a second ago. So since I already uploaded uh, that list, I'm just going to select it from the list that we, uh, that we have uploaded. And um, so then the, <clears throat> what the system will do now is it will take that list and it will analyze it, and it will create uh, create the model. Now, the way our modeling works is it works it works like this. There's um, if you imagined uh, that you had a group of people, and to your left were people of average height, uh, and then to your right there were uh, members of a basketball team. So the people on your right, the basketball team, maybe the average height is six foot eight, uh, and on your left the average height of the group of people is five foot eight. So one of the distinguishing characteristics of that group of people uh, on your right, that basketball team for sure, is that they are tall. Uh, and if you were looking for, uh, if you were looking for other basketball players, for sure, one of the attributes that you would be very, very interested in would be finding uh, finding tall people. So what we've done there in that particular example is we've identified an attribute height, and we figured out that the population I'm looking at, the basketball team is very different and very unique relative to the, the, the average in the popul the average uh, um, based on that attribute of height. That basic approach more or less is the way that uh, our modeling process here works. And so the way the modeling in, in, uh, in we analyze works is that we go through instead of just one attribute of height, we go through actually all of the 1500 attributes that we uh, append onto the members of your population, and we assess for every single one of those. Uh, we assess how that attribute compares to the national average in terms of overrepresentation or underrepresentation. And so, if you imagine when we were looking at our prospect tool before, I had said, "Okay, let's find people with more than ten million dollars within a certain geography." and and so on. We used just a few elements. It was maybe four or five elements that we used to get to a very, very um, sharply focused list. We analyzed, looked at all 1,500 attributes and figures out the top most, most unique ones, the ones like the, the height of the basketball team, which really unique uh, attributes that differ from the national average. And it uses those top attributes, the ones that make your list really, really unique in its uh, in its processing and in its its lookalike uh, algorithm to score, uh, and that sim again that similarity score, as I've mentioned before, when you when you do the scoring is from one to hundred. So let me show you real briefly what this looks like. And so we have the way the modeling works is we actually have a a model visualization that actually shows you for your population that you're analyzing, it shows you which of those top attributes and how much they they differentiate they differ from the national average, and so. That's what this is. Now, by the way, in the time that I was just explaining this to you, the system went ahead and created that lookalike model. And, uh, and so, again, what we used to take perhaps a week or two of analyst time has now been reduced down to uh, you know, literally just about a minute. Um, and so if you see here, this line here, that I'm, uh, if you can follow my mouse, this line is the national average. And, uh, and what we're seeing here is that these different attributes 
are either overrepresented or underrepresented in your uh, in in the particular list that I upload. And so the list I uploaded here, this this right here is the the list that we're analyzing and creating our model based on. It's the webinar uh, the webinar registrant. So if you could see here, the this we show all these different attributes and we sort this list. We rank them based on the 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 amount of over or under representation. So, the, the and it's the, the more something is over or under represented, the more unique it is. The more that's an element that's really unique about your population. And so we just we just list them all out. Um, now in the in the actual user interface, we only show the top 300 attributes. Not only top 300. I mean, you think about it, that's an incredible number of attributes. But as you can see, as I scroll down here further. The number, the, the actual amount of overrepresentation and underrepresentation over here starts to get smaller and smaller. So what does that mean? It means that for those, all of these attributes down here, you guys, the folks that are on the phone, the ones that we, we uploaded, you kind of look pretty average. You look sort of like the rest of the country. And so it's really these ones where you start to really over and under index and over a lot toward the top, that these are the ones where that, that your, the list is really, really unique and really, really different. And so if you look here, the top ones have this little green check mark. Okay? The green check mark indicates that these are, these are the attributes that are actually going to be used in the lookalike model processing. Um, this visualization, by the way, is just incredibly powerful. So as you can see, these different, uh, these different attributes are all categorized. And um, to make it easy to, to kind of analyze this, because this, this visual unto itself it's just this incredibly powerful uh, analysis tool. You can do things like, well, let me filter on the interest. And you can very quickly see, oh, well, the, the, uh, this particular population is under-indexing in terms of interest in grandchildren, over-indexing in interest of sport and sports of leisure, over-indexing in children's products and, and antiques, arts and antiques, really interesting over-indexing in women's apparel and men's apparel and PC I mean, is very very quickly you get this sense of understanding about the about the population, um, and you can again you could do this for all of these different attribute categories. So as you can imagine, when you upload a list in here, it, it, you can easily uh, kind of just lose yourself uh, for you know an hour or two just kind of uh, getting a, getting an interesting uh, insights into your population. So now. What we just did was we, we took the list that we had uploaded, this, this webinar registrant list, and I, I created a lookalike model. So now we have this, this webinar model. Okay? And the thing you can do with the webinar model is, the we in addition to kind of using it to get insight, the webinar model allows you to score. And that's what's incredibly powerful about it. And so you can score, again, data that you have. So you, everybody you know, has a ton of data. And what you could do is you could say, I want to find out, you know, who in this uh, database I have is similar to my best customers. And, and you can very quickly bounce them against the model and score them. The way the scoring works, again, is it, it scores on a scale from 1 to 100, and it uses these top lookalike uh, look attributes. And so basically what the system is saying is it's saying, uh, how much of those lookalike attributes do each of the members of the of the population I'm scoring have? So let me show you what that looks like. So these two buttons up here. If I if I score a list, I can say, okay, well, uh, maybe I just had uh, an event and I want to analyze the event registrants. So I happen to have uh, an event registrants list here. So this would be a list that I uh, already uploaded into the system, and uh, I go ahead and I can score it. So what the system is doing right now is it's taking all of those event registrants, it's adding the 1,500 uh, attributes onto each one of them, and then it's evaluating. It's saying out of the top 30 attributes in the webinar model, how many of those attributes appear in the event registrants list? And then it'll go through each person in that event registrants list, and it'll kind of tally up a score based on how much of those top 30 attributes each one of those people has. And if, again, if the score it tallies up is closer to 100, that means that member of the event registrants list is very similar to your webinar model. If the score is closer to 1, it means they're very different. And so what does that all look like when you're done with it? Well, as you can see here, uh, I've got this list, and, and I've modeled it a number of times. So you can, you can model lists over and over and over, and every time you model it, what happens is it adds another column with that modeled score into, uh, into the list. And so you can see here, uh, we just created this webinar model. And um, if you were, for instance, uh, wanted to 
target this particular list or you wanted to uh, prioritize them for uh, outreach, you could simply sort this list by, uh, by this score. You might determine that a threshold above a 60 is the right level. Uh, and you can, uh, you can then very quickly understand, OK, these people here uh, above 60 are the ones that are the most similar to my uh, webinar model. The ones below it are different. And maybe they go into a nurture track or something as something else. As I, I note here, just it, it's key. You can actually have multiple models. So for instance, if you had, um, you know, you might have uh, 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 different models for, for different parts of your, of your donor base or your customer base, and you can actually take a same group of people and run them against multiple models very quickly. Let me show you one other thing that's, that's pretty cool about this as well. So when you create a new model, the other thing you can do is you can actually enable it for API access. So just an API, as some people may know and some people may not know, an API is an application programming interface. And what that means is it, it's just a way for one computer to talk directly to another computer. So we're doing all of this analysis right now through our web-based interface. But you might say, well, I want to actually pass names into Wealth Engine directly from my uh, donor management or CRM system. Or I want to pass names into Wealth Engine directly from my website. So for example, you could, you could potentially integrate the Donate Now page or, or your e-commerce platform directly into the Wealth Engine API platform. And you could get the, uh, these, these model scores back in, uh, in real time uh, from the platform, which, which enables you to uh, streamline processing and, and, and also enables you to uh, make uh, to, to layer this type of um, insight into your operational processes or uh, as you um, whether it's through your web channels it could be through your call center you could even you can even do a, a lookup uh, using uh, using a phone number and get uh, and get intelligence layered in and, and helps you with real-time decisioning and and uh, uh, and so on um, and so the other thing here so we just scored a list uh, and and uh, the the list it's interesting if you actually look at um, so I can go back to my list here I have this event registrants list and uh, so I've scored it a, a few times with different models so if I go back to my dashboard and I look at my model tab this shows me the breakdown of the scores that I've done so I, I it's interesting you can see based on these I have these different models you can just very very intuitively here you can see that but this particular list of event registrants is more similar to, the, to my webinar model than it is to some of these other models that I've scored it against before. Um, let me show you the one last, uh, the one last piece here um, uh, with, regard to, uh, with regard to this demo. So Wealth Engine, you know, when you boil down what we do, um, you can kind of say we, we help you understand and get, you know, understand and, and, and maximize uh, your uh, effectiveness in, uh, in working with your current customers, but we also help you find and understand new, new customers. And so what we just did in terms of scoring a list would be really, really a, a thing you do with data that you already have, but you might need new prospects. You might want to enrich your database, and that's, what our, that's where our re, our re prospect tool comes in, and I'm going to return to where I started in the demo. And so if you click next to each of these models, I've got, uh, I've got a whole bunch of models, and you can imagine they're so easy to create. You could create potentially a ton of models. Um, I've got this webinar model, and I'm going to find prospects. And so what just happened now is that this, uh, this brought me over to our prospecting tool where I started at the very beginning. And now we have this additional thing, and it's this uh, filter using a model. So let me show you what this is. And um, so this part of it, so I don't know if folks on the phone know about uh, So Arthur C. Clarke, uh, uh, wrote 2001 Space Odyssey has this great quote. And, and the quote is, um, any sufficiently advanced uh, technology is indistinguishable from magic. And so this particular feature is, is really uh, pretty amazing. So what, what it allows you to do is it allows you to say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to um, pick a population of people. So perhaps everybody in the country greater than, uh, with a net worth greater than $25 uh, million and perhaps an age of uh, you know, 50 or less, 49 or less. And um, also, I want to have them uh, that that match my um, that match my webinar model. So these are all the models that we've created using we analyzed. We just created the webinar one with with you guys on the phone, and uh, I want I want everybody that uh, scores above a sixty out of this population. And so what you can do is add that, and the system will go ahead and it will dynamically on the fly 
score that population against your custom model. So it's not some generic model. This is a model that you created using your uh, your list, and it will uh, it will come back with um, it will come back with a count of folks that are above uh, above that threshold. Um, and so you can imagine if you if you had a bunch of models, or you wanted to really understand and find laser focused prospects, you could um, you could do that uh, very very quickly. Uh, and very, very efficiently using the tool. So let me just very briefly um, just summarize everything we went through and, and, and summarize uh, some of the benefits, and then we'll jump back in and, and um, have, um, have some, uh, some, some Q&A. And so um, what we did was we uh, took a list on my computer, and, we, uh, and, and that list happens to be a list of you all, and we uploaded it, and the system then attached uh, a incredible number of, of data attributes onto each of those those people uh, based on on this uh, very rich uh, and unique data platform that Wealth Engine has. We then crunched all that data to create this really easy to understand dashboard that gives you descriptive insight into the composition of that list, um, giving you this kind of portrait which helps you to better engage with that population. Uh, you can, you know, as Mark had mentioned in his example, you could even think of different ways to um, to uh, engage with sponsors around a, around an audience and so on. Um, the other thing is that because Wealth Engine has so much data, we're able to not only give you those analytics on your population, but we're also able to give you a reference set uh, of uh, the national average, so you can really see your population and how average it is or different it is. What we then do next is we took uh, that list, and we used it as a sample, as an input, to create a lookalike model. And with that lookalike model, uh, the, the platform then figured out, out of all of those attributes, which are the ones that are most over and under indexing that really make that particular population very unique. Then the, we showed you how we analyze uses the top, top most uh, attributes, the ones that really define the unique elements of your list. And use it to score another list and to very quickly easily see how the system rates the members of that other list on a, on a scale from 1 to 100 in, in terms of similarity to your model. And then lastly, we went into our prospecting tool and we showed you how you can, you can find a, 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 a group of people, a list in our prospecting tool, but then even make it much more razor focused. Uh, uh, to you know, using the using the, the model as a uh, as a filtering uh, criteria uh, down so that you can have some incredibly incredibly uh, tightly focused um, lists. So that's that's what we just went through. Um, the benefits of we analyzed here are, are kind of outlined on the screen. I, I'm not going to read them to you. You can probably look at them as I've been jabbering on here for the last minute or two. Um, but that's basically uh, that's basically what was, what we wanted to go through. Um, we thank you very much for the time, but we wanted to spend a little bit of time doing some uh, doing some Q and A. What questions do people have? Sure. First, thank you, John and Mark. This was a great presentation. Um, first question, Mark. We've gotten a handful about pricing. Is there anything you can speak to about the pricing? Uh, sure. The, uh, so the there's a wide range and variety of price points. So to give a specific price point um, would be uh, wouldn't be that helpful. Uh, it really depends on the number of models that you run, the amount of records that you will score, and so forth. So what I would recommend, Wendy, for any customers that have questions about pricing would be to contact their sales rep. And if they don't have a sales rep, uh, contact us through our marketing department, and we'll get their uh, request over to an appropriate uh, rep that can answer their specific pricing question. Thank you. John, for you, can you speak to how the data can integrate into other platforms such as Salesforce or another CRM? Absolutely. So the um, the data can be integrated in a few different ways. Um, so one way is, is you can take the data, for instance, scores that uh, are generated using uh, using We Analyze, and you can export that uh, from directly from the the web tool, and then you could import that over into your into your uh, other systems environment. Um, that's one way. The other way, of course, would be to use the API. And so, uh, if you wanted to have a, a, a direct, integrated um, uh, sort of uh, approach to pulling the data into your platform in real time, you can integrate it uh, into the uh, into the API. Great. Thank you. Well, when you're when someone's uploading a list, is there sort of a minimum number folks should be thinking about putting their list together? 
Yeah, that's a really good question. So um, you can get uh, you can get some really interesting insights uh, with the dashboard, even with very small lists. But we do we do uh, in the system have um, uh, a number of very kind of subtle um, sort of uh, uh, notifications to you that if the if the amount of data is too small for it to be um, you know for for yeah so, yeah exactly we 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 give you a little notification just to say hey you might want to look at that one with a little bit of a grain of salt and that's that that actual analysis is done on an attribute by attribute basis. With regard to the models, that's the dashboard. With regard to the models, we do have built into the system a, a 50, um, a list, a, a sort of a minimum of 50 members in the list. So you, you really want to, I would say, uh, you know, on the low end, you probably want to have in the order of hundreds. Uh, and then in the, the maximum size to create a model is 100,000, but that's very, very large. You can really get a very robust model with, you know, just 1,000 or 2,000 uh, records. Yeah. Mark, a question for you. In the beginning of the webinar, you spoke about the variety of clients that Wolf Engine has. Um, is we analyze a tool that any type of organization can benefit from, or do you need to be a certain industry or size? We think that uh, it, it's very diverse and broad in, in the reach that it can provide value to. So anybody that uh, is interested in learning more about their existing customers, uh, and, uh, and John points out the examples, while we focus on examples around modeling your best customers, it might also be interesting to learn about uh, your worst customers, the ones that defect, because now you can understand the characteristics of those customers that defect uh, uh, perhaps on a regular basis or don't convert. Uh, and, and I can address my marketing messages either away from that constituency group or I can address my value proposition to uh, improve my chances with that group. So a uh, large uh, company and small, nonprofit and commercial, uh, we've seen uh, success in our early stage release uh, across that spectrum. Thank you. Um, in regards to when you're uploading a list, and if individuals, if there's no information about them, for example, if someone doesn't drive a car, mm -hmm. how, does, how does, I guess, missing information affect? Mm. That's a, that's a, a very uh, insightful question. So um, our, our data platform, we don't have 100% coverage on everybody on every attribute. Uh, and so uh, the, our, the system does its analysis based on the, the uh, coverage we have on an attribute by attribute basis. And that's the, it kind of the, it's back to the question before about what's the kind of minimum size. So you, you want to make sure that your, the population you're analyzing is big enough so that the, the attribute coverage, uh, even on the, on the most sparsely populated attributes, is still enough so that you can get some statistically valid information, but uh, that's that's a, a very insightful question, and, and uh, in essence, we 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 we, ca we sort of compensate for that in the way that the system does the statistical processing, and and uh, and and in essence, it's true that the system doesn't have the same level of coverage for every attribute. So I do want to be mindful of everyone's time. We have about a minute and a last minute left. Uh, Mark and John, I do want to give you each the opportunity if there's any last words. For everyone listening on the webinar, we do have your questions, so we will make sure someone does follow up with you if we haven't had the opportunity to pose it today. Trying to do the first, then I'll go after that. Sure, thank you, Mark. Um, I, I, first, I guess I, I'd like to I'd like to just uh, uh, draw your attention to a couple things here. Um, if you did uh, like what you see and you're curious, um, these would be the details uh, in terms of reaching out to uh, our team here at Wealth Engine. Uh, if you don't already have uh, a point of contact. Uh, a point of contact with us. Uh, the other thing is, of course, we're really very interested in your feedback, uh, and so we'd love to know what you think. Um, and uh, again, thank you very, very much for uh, for the time today. So I'll do a couple of quick commercials. Thank you, John. Uh, our official launch to the world uh, is next Wednesday on March 18th, in which we uh, we will blast out a press release and. Perhaps we'll get a little bit of press coverage, and uh, it is when the product becomes available to anybody that's not a, a current customer. Uh, for those of you who might happen to be located in the greater Washington, D.C. area, we've got a, a launch event that's being held the next day, uh, the next evening at 5.30 on Thursday the 19th. So uh, shoot out a note uh, to info at wealthengine.com if you're interested in any details and an invitation. Um, I, I can't express my thanks enough for uh, the group that has sat through uh, we can get a sense for how many people have uh, had joined during the hour and five minutes, and uh, we had uh, essentially no drop-offs. 
to speak of. So uh, that, that's, that's terrific. Um, I, I want to thank you all. Thank uh, our customers for your ongoing commitment to the company. And uh, this is a very, very exciting, we think it's a breakthrough product, um, not just in our traditional markets, but in, in a broader uh, IT landscape. So uh, we're looking forward to bringing you on as, uh, as new successful customers. The most important thing to us is driving greater success within your uh, effort. And then uh, I, I love nothing more than hearing about all these success stories. So hopefully fast forward a month or two and we'll hear a whole host of great success stories. So that's all that we have. Uh, thank you very much, Wendy. Yeah, thank you again, Mark and John. And again, we will send out these slides and recordings tomorrow so that everyone can review these again. Thank you.